everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, the last place we left off, we were having a little bit of trouble uh, in Vool's butcher shop. Um, Orion is not quite up, uh, he's, he's not quite strong stomached enough to uh, disassemble the intestines and bowels of a animal. So, uh, I don't know, maybe he'll get a... Uh, Maybe he'll get kind of, you know, desensitized to it. I don't know. It's just not looking good for him right now, poor fella. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't fare any better. <laughs> but anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy it for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right into it. All right. <clears throat> Arm chain, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Not bad. He smiles with approval and looks at me with a proud expression. I don't think I'll be able to eat, like, ever again. And mumble, really unsettled by the entire task. It'll pass. The wolf shrugs and approaches the table. He opens the tap and then he opens a tap in the canister looking contraption, allowing him to wash out the bowl he used to separate the innards. Once he closes the tap, he sloshes the water around it and throws it out the back door. Here. He passes the bowl to me. You need to wash the guts and cut them into three feet long segments. He looks back at the rancid bucket. Should give us a, should give us ten in total. When you're done, fetch me. And once again, I am left alone with my bucket of shit. Peachy. I slowly wish that his stab would have finished me off. It seems like mercy compared to this. But no matter how indignant I am or pouty, I know it has to be done. So I pull out the gut, cut it off, and drop it into the bowl, washing it through. Rinse and repeat, until, just as, just as he predicted, I had ten ribbons of innards slushing in clear water. I take no time to get rid of that disgusting murky bucket and simply slush the water outside. I don't care what possible use it can have to them, they could have used it as rocket fuel for all I care. Once it's empty, I throw the bucket into the grass and close the door behind me. I wash up my hands on my way to the shop front and stop in the doorway. Oh, okay. I'm actually really surprised he didn't hit, he, he, that he didn't like hit anyone with that. With that shit water or whatever it was. Ugh. Sewer water! That's what I noticed Varissa on the other side of the counter. Wait, what is he doing here? I'm taking care of him. The male shrugs and I straighten out my cloak. You? Yes. He responds indignantly, but it only causes the female to raise her brow in disbelief. Of your own free will? Yes. Why? Because he needs looking after. Mm-hmm. Brissa croons, giving me a telling gaze. And what did Rannick promise you in return? Nothing. I'm doing a favor for a friend. The wolf responds with clear offense in his tone, his body tensing uncomfortably. Hmm. But she's still unconvinced. Not entirely compensates for your behavior the other day, but I guess it is a start. The female finally concedes with a soft smile, and I can see Vool's tail give an idle flicker. His posture relaxes, and it's obvious he takes what she thinks and says very personally. You okay in there? Verissa draws my attention and I blink. Hey kitties, knock it off. Knock it off. Junkito. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Come here. I'm sorry guys, the cats are wanting to get into a fight on the table. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. Be right back. Sorry about that guys and gals, I am back. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want me to take you back to the cottage? This would be a perfect opportunity to escape, but considering I've already did the worst part, and I do want to bond with him, so I shake my head. And he's not mistreating you. She darts her gaze between me and Vul, and I can see the male feels put, up, put on the spot. His anxious eyes meet with mine, and it's clear he worries I could drop him in hot water. But no, he did not mistreat me. Again, I shake my head, giving Vool a slight smile to which he almost sighs in relief. Right. Keep your secrets. I have more important things to do. However, if he starts to abuse you, you just come straight to me. I'm rather unsettled with the idea of anything, let alone anyone being in Vool's care. She gives him a teasing gaze, chuckling at his bemused expression. I want to pitch in, but before I manage to open my mouth, Vool puts a paw on my shoulder. Cora's incoming. I lean out and notice the tart... The tart strutting the village square as if she owns it. Oh god, the tart. Ugh, I guess scraping shit off a boar's gut wasn't the worst part of my day. 
Oh, she's cute, though. Marissa, my sweets, how are you doing? She almost sings in a melodic tone, embracing the white female. To my surprise, Marissa is quite receptive to this display of affection. I see you got that white stain out all right. Yeah, that wine stain, not white stain. Yeah, this isn't a Bill Clinton episode. Yeah, took a lot of salt and vinegar. Felt as if I was marinating myself. <laughs> Been there, sister. The tart laughs, but her eyes immediately center on me. Well, look at here, Rannick's new ward. Ugh, go away. So, how is our little pet doing? He's fine. Bull shrugs indifferently. You know, I felt bad for ignoring him at the feast, but the poor fellow looked completely petrified. Didn't want to add to his plate, having the entire village stare at him down was bad enough. You could, you could say that again. Oh no, she's considerate. It's good to see him out and about, though. I must say he's quite an improvement over that ever-frowning bunny. He was giving me the jibbies. The, 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 the jibbies? What? What? What is that word? Yeah, Trist is definitely a work in progress. And she's shit-talking Trist. Why can't I just hate you? Oh, I'm sure now that he got the boot, the chief will break him in, no problem. Here's hoping. Her smile widens, I have to agree. Fuck Trist. Oh shit, here he comes, how do I look? Suddenly the female readjusts herself, noticing some wolf in the distance. She's pushing her boobs up as if they needed to be fuller and takes on a more seductive pose. You look great. Yep, can't argue with that. Well, I'm missing the main selling point. You mean Rannick, to whose arms you could leap? Wait, what? Indeed. She frowns for a moment, but again tries to look as presentable as possible, taking discreet glances at the strapping male who slowly disappears into the distance. Damn. Cora mutters in disappointment. Rannick really is the lure here. She sighs and looks back to Verissa with a sorrowful gaze. Wait, is she using Rannick as bait to catch the interest of other males? Last time worked like a charm. Cullen would not take his eyes off of me the entire following day. That was all he could look at. I still can't believe that none have figured it out yet. Verissa rolls her eyes in amusement, shaking her head slightly, and I got my answer. She is. You two have been doing this for ages. Can males really be that stupid? Yes. And Rannick is in on this? This makes so much sense. I bet she helps keep... I bet she helps him keep other females at bay while he makes her look like a prize to other guys. Sneaky sneaks. Okay, lady, you're not a tart. You're a smart cookie. Doing what? Vol blurts out, and I can hardly contain a laugh. Never mind. Rissa dismisses him, and I snort. Seems males can be that stupid. Yes, we can. Vul is dead convinced Cora and Rannick are an item. I've been here just a week and I figured it out. It's not like they're subtle about it either. Anyway, I gotta run. The pups are alone without any supervision. Wait, all right, why are you taking care of the pups? For some blinks, excuse me, in confusion. The den mother is still not feeling well enough, so I decided to step in. Besides, with the pack gone, it gives me something to do. Anything to keep the mind occupied, eh? Cora's expression falters, and it's clear she's hiding distress. I'm not the only one who picked up on it, and Verissa places a paw on her shoulder reassuringly. Rannick will find out what's going on. I'm sure he will. I just hope nothing bad has happened. Darwin is very reckless, you know. I kind of feel bad I didn't leave with them. Survivor's guilt. A little scoffs, and I widen my eyes. They're not dead. Not confirmed, at least. He shrugs. What the fuck, Vool? <sighs> You always know how to brighten the mood. Is it wise to leave that pup in his care? The female looks to me with worry. I was just asking myself the same question. Rissa narrows her eyes and she gives me a very inquisitive gaze. I shudder slightly because I really don't want to be dragged into this. You females are all the same. He's doing fine. If you are that desperate for a pup to coddle, just get yourselves knocked up already. <laughs> oh, Rannick, what the fuck? Oh, that's a good line. He did not just say that. I gasp just as loud as the females are. Had he not just took the air out of our collective lungs, Cora would have noticed, but we're all too stunned. How about I get in there and knock your teeth out instead? I can't understand why Rannick puts up with you. It's almost beggar's, be it almost beggar's belief. Don't worry. I'm not just spoiling your dream, mate. We're not like that. 
The male sneers, and I'm about to grab my head. What are you doing? Seriously, gross. Cora grimaces in shock. Good thing the human doesn't understand you, otherwise you'd ruin the Pope with your filthy muzzle. I'd say you'd ruin him by, t by turning the whelp into a flower. Oh my god, Vol, you need to get out of your own way. I can see Verissa losing patience again, and had, and had we been behind closed doors, Rannick's table would suffer through another bout of abuse. Don't you worry, little guy. Rannick will be back soon and take you home from that meanie. <coughs> the tawny female draws my attention to her. She bends over to me slightly with a kind smile. He's a good wolf, unlike some. She rolls her eyes in Fool's direction. He'll take great care of you, just don't give him the stink eye. Another tryst jab, confirmed by a wink. I almost let out a chuckle. The female straightens up and looks at Verissa with worry. I don't want to see. I hope this one will work out. Actually, they're getting along quite well. Oh, they do? That's great to hear. Cora smiles with relief. Aluna knows that male needs some good company. Talk about a lone wolf. Anyway, see you later at the feast. She nods to me and Verissa, ignoring Vul and rushes off to the village. Bye! Verissa waves back and waits for the girl to make some distance before she faces Vul with a really stern look. We stand like this in uncomfortable silence for a while, until the black wolf shrugs in annoyance. What? If I so much as hear a peep from him that you've been mistreating the guy, I will never speak to you again. She states sternly. Understood? You're exaggerating a little bit. Do you understand me? I want to hear you say it. She re re reiterates through a soft growl. Loud and clear. Good. The female nods and looks to me. You let me know when he crosses the line. I know he's bound to. And with that, she leaves. Damn, that went south fast. Then again, with Vul, it's always the case. I look to him with a slight worry and disappointment. I know he's capable of better. He wants to be better. And I can see a subtle shift in his expression as his longing eyes follow the departing white female. He's clearly saddened and defeated. Vool. I don't want to talk about it. He states sternly. The moment of weakness gone from his muzzle as he gives me a scornful look. Let's get back to... <coughs> Let's get back to work. I heard a mouse. I heard a mouse in the, in the background, no, in the background noise. I follow him into the back room, where he stands in front of the bowl. What now? Now you'll invert and, now you'll invert and clean them. What? I blink in confusion. I'll show you. Great. I watch as the wolf pushes the bowl under the tank thingy. He readjusts the canister so that the tap overhangs the bowl. This part is easy. You grab an intestine and a spindle. The wolf picks up a metal spike with a dull tip and brings it close to one of the gut cuts. Just rub the end until it opens up and slide the spindle in. Now pull the edge over your thumb. He inverts one half the opening and stretches it over his finger like a balloon. Huh? See? That's how we'll invert it. Oh. You just remove the spindle and slide it from the other side, behind your thumb. Oh, give yourself a grand thumb. Okay. Now we've created a cuff. He smiles, showing off his handiwork. I'm surprised it doesn't rip. Guts are incredibly strong. They can take a lot. Now we pull the cuff over the tap and turn it on. The wolf nods and I do as he requested. I watch as the cuff fills with water, bloating the intestine while Vul just threads it through and allows the weight of the filled up gut to do the work for him. What the hell? See? It isn't all that bad. Now that it's inverted, just scrape it again with the back of the knife and clean. He showcases, removing the inner filling, the inner lining of the intestine, leaving a near see-through balloon-like tube. Fetch me once you do the rest. He stands up and slaps me on my back hard enough to draw air out of my lungs. I look at him with amusement as he leaves to the shop front. I'm fairly certain I figured it out. Every time something upsets him, he simply burrows back into himself into work. I shake my head and decide to simply commit to my task. The first casing is a struggle, but I'm too proud to call, call him back for a second demonstration. I simply retrace his steps slowly, trying to understand what the hell it is I'm doing. I rub the end until it opens up. Slide the spindle, use my thumb to leverage the one side, and push the spindle from underneath. Finally, the cuff resembles what he has done, and once I start pouring water in, the gut blots like a balloon, th threading itself over onto the other side. Huh. As distasteful as this is, I am incredibly amazed how well someone came up with this. It's almost like an art form. Once each inverted gut is scraped of its lining and washed clean in the water, I go and fetch the black male. He enters the back room surprised almost as if he did not expect me to be done this soon. 
Well, well, we'll make a butcher out of you yet. The wolf places a paw over my shoulder, and despite his enjoying, despite enjoying his praise, I try to play it off cool. You have successfully put me off from meat. <laughs> Tis yet to be seen. He snickers and checks each of the see-through ribbons. You haven't ripped any of them as well, huh? Are we done then? I mumble worriedly, and he laughs it off. Stop your whining and come. He waves at me and walks towards one of the barrels. Open up the lid. I nod and do as asked. The moment the lid is off, the room fills with a very acidic odor. Oh, God, that has a really sour smell. It's pickling salt. It'll cure them and make them safe to eat. He grabs a paw full of the casings and dunks them in. Once he's done, I put the lid back on and he nods towards a small clay bottle. Bring it here. We need to wash up. I open up the cork and the familiar boozy scent hits my nose. It's moonshine. I realize and he just nods. Yeah, just drizzled on my paws. I sprinkle the alcohol. He I sprinkle the alcohol and he I sprinkle the alcohol and he rubs it in fervently. Seems that working improved his mood, or maybe showing me the ropes is more enjoyable than he thought. Whatever the case, I'm glad for it. Once he's done, he grabs the bottle from me and douses my hands in turn. I'm not sure if they know what bacteria are, but I have to admit I'm impressed by their hygiene. I scrub my arms all the way up to the elbow just to make sure I didn't leave a spot. Right. Go there and turn the wheel. <clears throat> he points to the giant wooden box that I assume is the grinder. The wheel does give some resistance, but eventually it budges, and I can hear all sorts of gears clamor inside. Vol pours some of the moonshine to the top, and it sloshes through the inner workings of the machine. As I continue to turn, as I continue to turn, the contents eventually spill out of the tube in the front, meaning the machine got disinfected. He's really diligent with his work. When it's all finished, Vol plugs the bottle and places it back on the table. Let's get the sausages ready. Your meat won't be marinated until tomorrow, but I've got some in stock from yesterday. He lifts up a lid from another barrel, and I can see meat swishing around in herbs and brine. Do you see that metal bowl? The wolf points to the side, and I locate his quarry with a nod. Bring it here. Douse it with the moonshine and slush it out. He watches with approval as I follow the instructions, and once I'm done, he smiles. Right. Fill it up with meat and dunk it into the grinder. As I did that, he began plucking garlic from the strands hanging on the wall, along with onions and some other herbs. I observe as he peels the vegetables, but he, doesn't but he doesn't chop them. Instead, he breaks the garlic into cloves and simply cuts onions in half. Every two bowls of meat I put into the grinder, he chucks, one in, he chucks in one halved onion accompanied with several garlic cloves and a bundle of thyme. I wonder if I should tell him to go easy on the garlic, but I shake my head. Once I'm finished, uplo once I'm finished uplo unloading the tenth bowl, he stops, he stops me with a paw. That's enough. He passes me a small wooden box and points to the side shelf. Grab a mortar and grind several of those pellets. Curiously, I glance inside the container only to be met by familiar black seeds. Pepper? You do know it, then. Perhaps Rannick isn't wrong, and... I am a noble, yes. I sigh with amusement. It never gets old. Pepper isn't that uncommon where I come. Quiet. He hushes me as I hear as, I, as his ear begins to twitch again. And a moment later, we can hear Vithra's voice echo from the outside. Vulgar, you there? Shit. Stay in here. He commands, stepping into the shop. I came to get my meat for the week. You busy? No, no. What cuts do you need? Just the usual. Give me some chops and ribs if you have any. Oh, lovers and kidneys, too. I'll take all you've got. All of them? The black wolf sounds confused and Vithra laughs. Yes, I'll be making pies for the packs in case we'll have to send them after Rannick. I don't like the sound of that. Speaking of... His tone shifts slightly. Cora says your pup's sitting, your pup's sitting that human. Why would he need sitting anyway? I can hear a vool pause, almost as if he wasn't happy about revealing my presence to the brown male. Well, he doesn't. Undignified task for an alpha like you. Seems like a waste of your time. He's quite useful, I can assure you. Mind if I see the wee bugger? I know long pause, and I'm quite unnerved by Vool's reluctance. After all, I've been in the shop all day. Everyone saw me. Why well, make an exception with Vithyr? Uh, Piglet? He eventually calls out, and I take it as a cue to step outside. So, what is he doing here? Sweeping floors and staying out of your way? Ha ha ha! The male laughs, but something about his words doesn't sit well with Vool. On the contrary, he's helping me with work. Oh? The older male blinks, looking at me inquisitively. Is he a butcher, then? Again, Vol lets the words hang, and it doesn't fit well. No, I'm teaching him the ropes. Ah, so he became your apprentice. If you say so. 
My, that is quite something, isn't it? I suppose this will add onto his debt, eh? Wait. What? Oh. Good place to pause it. Oh, man. A little, little kind of like a little bomb got dropped there. This has been a pretty good episode. I enjoy that. Ah, oh, Cora. Cora actually turns out she's very adorable and nice. Look forward to seeing more of her. Also, I like me some wolf girls. I like me some wolf guys, so this game is perfect for me. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!